My favorite verse is Romans 12, 2, which is, uh, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I've been reading the Bible and trusting God and just and putting into practice everything that he's been telling me. And he's literally began to renew my mind to, to a point where I'm, I'm like completely changed. My name is Evan Ellingson. I'm 33 years old and I grew up in the Indian Empire. Well, life before the drugs was kind of just like fun. I, I, I remember just, I've always been kind of a people's person. I love hanging out with people. I would say around like 19 is when I got into the heavy drugs. And when that happened, over time, it just got to a point um, where that was pretty much everything I did. Everything I, my whole life revolved around um, not just drugs, but the whole party scene, like everything that came with it. You know, I'm gonna look out for myself and, and, and do as good as I can and I didn't really care who was in my path or it just got to a point where I, I stopped talking to my family and you know, I would go months without calling my mom and then three, four months and then I'd call my mom and you know, she'd be worried sick because she hadn't talked to me. She didn't know I was alive or dead and she'd been calling over to the jails and the coroner's office and um, so I just got really sad real quick. I would say that my rock bottom was when I was 19. Um, my older brother Austin, had, he had died from a heroin overdose. And um, when, he died from a, when he died from the overdose, it kind of just like sent me over the edge because uh, up to that point in my life, I, everything I was learning or everything I was doing was about making money and uh, looking out for myself and just, you know, being the best that I could be and not caring about who it affected. And then once my brother passed away, um, I just kind of realized that there was much more to life and um, and how important people were. And I and I would have given it everything in, that I had to be able to get my brother back and I knew I couldn't. And so it kind of just sent me on this down, uh, downhill spiral where everything just got uh, really dark and scary and uh, things weren't fun anymore. Uh, it, it no longer was fun. It, it became more of um, like a really deep bondage that I couldn't get out of. I remember there was this ranch that somebody was talking about. And so we started looking up online, uh, you know, ranches out in the middle of the desert. And sure enough, the River's Edge Ranch popped up. When I got to the ranch, I was coming down pretty hard. I mean, I, I had been, you know, not sleeping, not eating, and just, you know, living a crazy lifestyle. I weighed 132 pounds. Uh, I was pale as a ghost. There's a lot of things that God has shown me since I've been here at the ranch where um, some of the stuff he showed me took months. I'm starting to see uh, why things were happening the way, the way they were and what God was doing. And it just really strengthened my faith to let me know that, hey, like sometimes we're not gonna understand things, but we just have to put one foot in front of the other and trust God and trust that he loves us and has our back. I mean, God has restored my mind. Um, I have peace now again, I have hope. And um, not, not the type of hope that I think that there's hope, but the type of hope that I know that there's hope. I'm super excited about life. Like, I know that there's hope for me. And now I, I just want to let other people know that there's hope. I was telling my, my brother and I was like, hey, you know, like, I'm going to be graduating soon. If you want me to, to babysit the kids while, while you guys go on a date night, I'm down. And my brother's like, all right. And so for, for him to say all right and to actually be serious about trusting me to do that, is huge. He wouldn't let me um, anywhere near his house or, or around any of my family before when I was getting high. And now not only am I allowed to be, you know, in their house, but he trusts me with, with like babysitting my nephews and nieces, which is huge. So I'm going to third phase from here. This last month uh, that I've been here, I've been, you know, really slowing down and starting to see things. And one of the things I knew I was gonna, what, what I was gonna miss was the guys here and the fellowship and the bond that we have, the brotherhood. And so me going to third phase, I'll be with some of the guys that have already graduated from here. And then not only that, but I'm like telling everybody at the ranch, like, hey, you guys better go to third phase because I'm gonna see you there, you know? So I'm looking forward to seeing all the brothers at, down at third phase. My plan was to go off and get my own place and start working. And uh, I, was set, I was set in stone in my plan and uh, I had lined everything up to where that, that's what I was gonna be doing. I heard God say to me, do you really think I'm not gonna take care of you? If, if your heart is right, in the right place, do you really think I'm not gonna take care of you? And instantly I knew, um, I knew that my plan w wasn't, wasn't from God and that he wanted something different from me. In my heart, I, I know that I'm supposed to be working with people because I know that there's hope. 
And so for me, I have to go tell people that there's hope because if not, I won't, I won't be able to sleep at night because it's not like I think there's hope. I know there's hope. 